present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sal, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us today in the splendid Liverpool Playhouse. Liverpool is a fine old city whose linguistic derivation is an interesting one. Apparently it takes its name from two old English words, meaning boggy water. <laughs> the town is first mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle when King Edmund sailed up a creek of the Mersey and discovered muddy pools, who went on to become one of the greatest blues guitarists of the last century. <laughs> Let's, let's meet the teams. There are four performers who I first knew as hopeless beginners, barely able to string a joke together. And I can honestly say that success hasn't changed them at all. <laughs> they are on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and on my right, Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke-Taylor. And the warmest of welcomes, please, for our lady at the scoreboard, whose skillful hand never fails to get the team's points up. <laughs> the, the very lovely Samantha. <laughs> we'll start with a round called Celebrity Misquotes, or in the words of Oscar Wilde, there's only one thing worse than being talked about, and that's having nothing to declare but my handbag. <laughs> In this round, teams, I'd like you please to provide some suggestions of things that famous people, alive or dead, would never have said. Willie, will you start, please? Well, true though it be, Jesus Christ would never have said, total bastard shall inherit the earth. <laughs> Graham? Um, Clive Anderson, no, you talk, I'll listen. <laughs> Tim, Duchess of York, have this one on me. <laughs> <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Vinnie Jones, violent, moi. Not open house anymore. Andrew Neil, in all modesty. <laughs> Oprah I'm Winfrey. Your private life is no concern of mine. <laughs> Beethoven, there's no need to shout. <laughs> Anthea Turner, I know my limitations. <laughs> Demi Moore, Tim, I may not be much, but take me. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, Our next round, teams, is an old favourite called One Song to the Tune of Another, but it'll need some explanation. As you might guess, this is a musical round in which each of you will start by vocalising the lyrics normally intoned to a popular song of my choosing. However, the refrain usually associated with what we call the first song will be dispensed with, and instead we'll take another tune or second song from which the vocal part has been removed, leaving just the melody line. Next, we'll play the melody line of the second song, that's the one without the words, to accompany the first song, that's the one without a tune but with lyrics. So, and here comes the clever part, teams. <laughs> What you're doing is literally singing one song to the tune of another. Can we just run that through again, Hump? <laughs> well, I must say, it is a rather unnatural combination, which reminds me, you'll be accompanied at the piano by Colin Shell. <laughs> Barry, I'd like you to start by singing the words of Yes, We Have No Bananas to the tune of the Star Spangled Banner. There's a fruit store on a street And it's run by a Greek And he keeps good things to eat But you should hear him speak 
when you ask him anything, never answers no. He just yeses you to death as he takes your dough tells. <laughs> yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. We spring beans and onions, cabbages and scallions and all kinds of fruit and say we have an old-fashioned tomato a nice juicy potato Your that registered two on our clapometer. <laughs> Graham, would you please sing the words of Underneath the Arches to the tune of The Deadwood Stage? <laughs> <laughs> Underneath the arches I dream my dreams away. <laughs> Underneath the arches on cobblestones I lay. Every night you'll find me tired. Out and warm, happy when the daylight comes creeping. <laughs> Heralding dawn, sleeping when it's raining. And sleeping when it's fine, I hear the train rattling by above. Pavement is my pillow, no matter where I stray. Underneath the arches, I dream my dreams away. Right, it's your turn, Tim, now. Would you please sing the words of Pinball Wizard to the tune of Jerusalem? <laughs> Ever since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball. From Soho down to Brighton, I must have played them all. But I ain't seen nothing like him in any amusement hall. That deaf, dumb and blind kid sure plays a mean pinball. He stands like a statue, becomes part of the machine. Feeling all the bumpers, always playing clean. Plays by intuition, the digit counters for That deaf, dumb and blind kid sure plays a mean pinball. Finally, you, Willie, would you please sing the words of the little Jimmy Osmond classic long-haired lover from Liverpool <laughs> to the tune of the Marseillaise. <laughs> Heavy a long-haired lover from Liverpool and I'll do any sing his say. I'll be a clown or your puppets for your April Fool If you'll be my sunshine daisy From L.A. I'll be your leprechaun I'll sit upon an old toadstool I'll serenade you till I'm old and grey I'll be your long-haired lover from Liverpool You'll be my sunshine daisy from L.A. You'll be my lovely daisy on the mountainside there were lots of other flowers to my door. Yeah, the other flowers hung their heads and cried, Just the loveliest of them all. Just as hey, 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 hey. <laughs> What is this sardine looking at? Well, with Christmas on the way, we're all looking for interesting ideas for presents to enjoy at home with the family. So I thought it might be appropriate, teams, for us to sample an exciting new board game I've discovered, which tests its players to the limits with interesting general knowledge questions about hair. <laughs> it's called Trivial Hirsuit. Everyone starts by placing their counters on the first square, except for Graham, who under the circumstances has allowed a head start. <laughs> Graham, will you start, please, now? I want you to roll the dice. Now, make a move. Oh, Seventeen the hard way. Tell me what category you're in.
Take your time. That's uh, entertainment. <laughs> right. What word traditionally comes between air and lair in the Sandhurst entrance examination? <laughs> Pass. Well, I'll give that question to Tim. Could it be hair with air, hair, lair? <laughs> <laughs> Your turn, Tim. Oh, Roll yes. the dice. So exciting. <laughs> right, and you've landed on... Science what? and nature. Science and nature, right. Here's your question. During a full moon, what would you expect to grow all over the body of Sir James Goldsmith? <laughs> Edward Fox? <laughs> Do I get another go? No, later. Later. It's your turn, Mary. Yes. Roll the dice. <laughs> Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. History. Okay, here's the question. According to tradition, what was it about Judas's hair that indicated he was not to be trusted? His toupee. The answer is, he had red hair. Good Lord. Gosh. Judas is carrot. <laughs> Your turn, Willie. <laughs> One. Good. But I'm going to jump about on the spot. <laughs> No, it makes you feel you scored more. <laughs> um, history. According to old English superstition, what would it mean if a hairpin fell out of your hair? <laughs> it's hairpinning again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no sympathy. Do you, know the, <laughs> do you know what the answer is? It means that someone wants to speak to you. Good Lord. <laughs> what, you mean like, is that your hairpin? <laughs> Graham, it's your turn. Oh. Two. There and back. Entertainment again. <laughs> During entertainer Bruce Forsyth's little-known career as a commercial pilot, <laughs> what was his nickname? I think it was Wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been the, the world's favourite hairline. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I've got to say, your turn now, Tim. It's just nerves, that's all. Those like his teeth. Our science and nature. Right, Lanugo, Villas and Terminal are all names of what? Paula Yates' children. <laughs> Do you know the answer? They might be names of hair. Yes. Barry. <laughs> Uncanny. Just a guess. Five. One, two, three, four. Oh, it, history again. Right, what did the goddess Juno remove from Dido as she lingered on the burning funeral pyre? The fire extinguisher. <laughs> or? Not hair. <laughs> Not in its entirety. Is it one hair? Yes. Oh. Well, it's a lock. I'm not quite oh, sure whether not a lock hair. is... No, 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 Is it audience? No, no, no. All right, Willie, it. now. Do you realise this pathetic plastic cup cost a quid? <laughs> That's probably well, more than the dice. Shake it carefully, then. Oh, yeah. Well, I've heard that before. <laughs> Six. 
three. <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> Sergeant Nature. What type of shirt is traditionally worn by people living in self denial? The Tottenham Hotspur home strip. <laughs> Okay, that's the end of that one. The next round is entitled Good Morning Radio. It's a game subtly adapted from morning television by adding the word radio. <laughs> and changed beyond all recognition by adding the word good. <laughs> In this round, teams, I'd like you to alternate as interviewers and guests on a breakfast chat show. As you would expect of the genre, the job of the interviewers is to prevent their guests from saying anything of interest. <laughs> Points will be awarded to the guests for any interesting information they're able to slip in. So without further ado, let's find out who the guests are today on Good Morning with Tim and Willie. Uh, our guests today are Father Christmas and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Good morning, both of you. Morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the Which reindeer. of you is Father Christmas? <laughs> And why is your nose so red, Father Christmas? <laughs> ho, 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 Tim. Um, Rudolph and I, in fact, uh, travel on this uh, airborne sleigh, which is the only one of its kind in, uh, in history, which is a, a unique... Do you feat. collect any interesting insects? <laughs> only in my beard. No, I, I was talking about the uh, only airborne sleigh in history. What colour is it? It's red. Right. Red, red. With gold trimmings and uh, little cherubs and things painted on the side. A little bas relief. And the runners are pure platinum. And what's also extremely interesting... <laughs> Great story about those runners. Oh, isn't there? yes. Tell, tell them about the runners. Well, <laughs> it's an amazingly fascinating place where we actually live. What a shame we haven't got any more time. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, it's time now to find out who'll be taking the couch on BGTV with your host, Barry and Graham. Good Boy. morning. Boy. And, Good morning. And, uh, well, over the years on the couch, we've had a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guests came in. Yeah. <laughs> and this morning, we're very privileged to have Her Majesty the Queen and Princess Margaret. <laughs> Morning. Mums, before we... Morning. Before... Good morning. Morning. And to all my people. Good morning. <laughs> and to all my sister's people. Morning. I'm sorry to interrupt, but... I saw well. Thank you. Uh, before we get to the makeover... Um... <laughs> I wondered if you had any hints on Caribbean cooking. <laughs> Just put everything in that pot. Yes, that's what we do, yes. Uh, we you'll... wouldn't touch it with a barge pail. Do you ever go... We wouldn't touch a barge pail. <laughs> we wouldn't know what a barge pail is. <laughs> your Majesty, uh, has your facial hair ever caused you... Uh... <laughs> Embarrassment in public. I once grew a 14 inch beard just to help it. <laughs> it's just a trick of the light. It doesn't show on the stamps at all. <laughs> Can I sing now? Well, we were hoping that you'd be out on the weather map with Fred. <laughs> I bet you like a flutter on the lottery, don't you? Sisters together at home doing it, the lottery. What is he talking about? Vulgar little man. <laughs> no, I think we're talking about the lottery where the numbered balls drop. And um, people win a lot of money for it. Changes people's lives. You could win a I lot of money. I think having your numbered balls drop would change your life. <laughs> I wish it had happened to some of the family. 
I don't want to hurry you along, but I'm expecting... <laughs> Who is that? Go That's Trump nice is in waiting. That's Littleton. He's yeah. going to play for us, eh? Are you going to sing with him, dear? Probably. We're we'll beginning to sound like Hinge and Bracken. We are. <laughs> okay. Well, we Queen. stand now for the next round. <laughs> Teams, I'd like you please to suggest some of our more traditional sayings and proverbs that might usefully be adapted to suit certain foreign countries. We're going to start with you, Tim, in your own voice, please. <laughs> Thank you. S Spain, there are plenty more fish in your sea. <laughs> Sweden, a soft voice turneth away wrath, but talk like this and they'll piss themselves. <laughs> Willie, fr fr from Italy, accidents will happen in the best regulated families in Sicily. <laughs> uh, and in Russia, they say, don't put new wine into old Boris. <laughs> Holland, if the cap fits, you're safe. <laughs> in uh, Japan, they say, get rid of these scavenging birds before you bring the harvest in. Rook before you reap. <laughs> in France, they say Le Pen is mightier than President Chirac. In Eastern Europe, they say you can't bloody get out of Estonia. <laughs> Australia, love is blind, so brace yourself, Tim. <laughs> right, it's now time to play that old favourite spot, the ostrich. Oh. This is a, a particular favourite of Barry's, and he's been nagging me for years to play the game on the programme. Teams, you already have your safety helmets and feather dusters. So, lights out, please, and Samantha, open the cage. Well done, Barry. <laughs> I must admit, I have played it before. <laughs> okay, moving on. We now come to a long-forgotten musical round called Cyril, which involves singing the words of a given song, but in reverse order. They call it Cyril because, rather cleverly, this is lyric spelled backwards. <laughs> The idea to revive this old classic came to me suddenly one day as I was walking through Finsbury Park, or as Cyril players know it, Crappy Rubsniff. <laughs> <laughs> so, teams. <laughs> Thinking caps on backwards, please, because I'd like you to... Sing along in reverse to the piano accompaniment of Les Nillock. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Colin Sell. You know, I was interested to learn recently that Colin doesn't just play the piano. In fact, I have a letter here which says he's recently become very handy on the sax. And that's signed by the Haringey Council Waste Disposal Department. <laughs> right, Tim and Willie, you're to start. I'd like to hear from you a backwards rendition of the duet... A, you're adorable. Adorable, you're a beautiful, so you're being charms of full cutie. A, you see, and darling, a, you're deciding your e arms, my feather, a, you're f and me too, good look, you g heavenly, so your h idolized, I won your eye. 
Jill and Jack like we're gay. Kissable, so you came. Eyes, you're in light, love, the is L. Day all on go. go. Could we be O N M? Okay, you're speaking alphabetically. G S R Q. Boss. Complete like my name. You sweet, very your means B C Y X U double. You with alphabet. The third one was too funny. It's me to me. You want you tell to. That's the first time I've liked that song. <laughs> Your turn, Barry and Graham. Your backward song is Anything You Can Do. Better do can I can you anything you then better anything do can I can't you know can I yes can't you know can I yes can't you know can I yes can I yes you then greater I'm later or sooner greater be can I be can you anything not your no am I yes not your no am I yes not your no am I yes am I yes Partridge single A with partridge A shoot can I Arrow and bow A with sparrow A get can I Cheese and bread on live can I That on only and Yes Ratter can so <laughs> Can you know Teddy You then hire anything sing can I Can't you know Can I yes 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 Can't you know Can I That's very nearly all we've got time for, in fact, but there is just long enough, I think, to play a round called TV Seasons. This round was inspired by those themed Channel 4 seasons that tackle taboo subjects. Explicit programs have recently included drug abuse, weird culty religions, and non-stop kinky sex. And that's just one episode of Brookside. <laughs> Teams, I'd like you please to come up with some suggestions for the titles of challenging films and other programs likely to fill a late night Channel 4 season. On the subject of gardening. <laughs> Willie, will you start, please? Uh, the Great Train Shrubbery. <laughs> Rivets on Parade. <laughs> Starring Petunia Clark and Robbie Coldframe. <laughs> Lawn Green, Patrick Miller, Claire Bloom and Kate Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, to mention Graham Garden. <laughs> Hello, Collie. <laughs> Back to the future. <laughs> Laurel and Hardy Perennials. The compost man always rings twice. <laughs> and, uh, grow bag in anger. <laughs> Bring what? me the hedge of Alfredo Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the Pete Best of Time picks up the redundancy notice of eternity, <laughs> and the Trevor Jordash of Fate glimpses the garden patio of destiny, <laughs> I notice we've finally reached the end of the show. So from Samantha, the teams, and myself, goodbye. Kimber Taylor, Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, and Willie Rushton have been given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton. Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games.
the piano is Colin Sal, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the show in which laughter follows fun as sure as night follows dawn. You find us once again in the magnificent Playhouse Theatre in Liverpool, the hometown of such proud Liverpudlian luminaries as Scylla and Tarby, <laughs> who to this day still live nearby. <laughs> well, Marbella's not that far. <laughs> How the city got its unusual name has been debated for many years, but it's now generally agreed by experts that it came from the liver birds. In fact, they reckon that if Carla Lane hadn't been available to write it, <laughs> the city would still be known by its old name of It Ain't Off Hot Mama Pool. <laughs> now, I have to announce that after last week's show, there was a huge response to our audience phone-in vote to decide if the team should come back for a second time. <laughs> I'm interested to see that they've ignored it and turned up anyway. <laughs> they are on my right. Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> and on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and please welcome our scorer, the delightful Samantha. <laughs> Incidentally, exciting news. Samantha tells me she's expecting a visit from a film producer in her dressing room after the show. <laughs> with news of a part he's been holding for her. <laughs> he seems sure she's going to make it big. <laughs> our, first, our first round is called Chat Up Lines. In life's mating game, these all-important remarks are often our passports to a fulfilling emotional relationship. And our teams are certainly no strangers to the arcane art of the chat-up. Willie tells me there are a few things that give him such a thrill as going out on the pool with a few of the lads. <laughs> Apparent, apparently they start by getting tanked up on coffee and biscuits in the vest. <laughs> And by 10.30, the din can be heard all over the parish. <laughs> In this round, teams, I'd like you, please, to suggest some chat-up lines for use by the senior citizen. Barry, will you start, please? Uh, oh, I see your glass is empty. Do you mind if I put my teeth in? <laughs> I say, baby... Let's lock Zimmer frames and rattle till we drop. <laughs> Graham? Hello. Who am I? <laughs> Tim? No, that's a war wound. <laughs> Fancy a Horlix? How's your back? <laughs> Is that your colostomy bag, or are you just pleased to see me? <laughs> <laughs> your sheltered accommodation or mine? <laughs> I could take you to a hip joint. <laughs> I want to put my tongue in your ear. <laughs> Take your death aid out. <laughs> I want to run my fingers through your hair, so pass it over. <laughs> Any more? Right, well, our next game is a musical one called Pick Up Song, in which the teams will sing along to a selection of discs drawn from my personal collection. 
Hip-hop DJ Samantha is poised at the turntable. <laughs> and in due course, she'll be rapping and scratching some fine old seven inches into life. <laughs> and the team should take it in turns to sing along. While the teams are singing, Samantha will suddenly cause the volume to drop away to nothing by a process known to... Uh, actually, is that they always say you should read a few words ahead and I have <laughs> if on the music's return the teams are within a gnat's crotchet of the original I'll be awarding points and points mean prizes what do points mean? <laughs> well better out than in I always say <laughs> this week's prize is just the thing to warm the heart of any collector of national coal board memorabilia it's this lovely coal effect coal mine. <laughs> we'll start with you, Willie. Will you please accompany Jerry and the pacemakers singing I Like It? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like the way you run your fingers through my hair. And I like the way you tittle my chin And I like the way you let me come in When your mama ain't there I like it, I like it I like the words you say and all the things you do And I like the way you straighten my tie And I like the way you're winking your eye And I like you Like you Okay, your turn, Barry. I'd like you, Barry, to accompany Johnny Ray singing Just Walking in the Rain. Just walking in the rain Getting soaking wet Torturing my heart By trying to forget just to walking in the rain So alone and blue All because my heart Still remembers you Two, three, four People come to windows They always stare at Shake their heads in sorrow Saying who can let go Now Tim, will you accompany Jerry and the Pacemakers again Singing this time Ferry Cross the Mersey Flying Hurry it up a bit. Hearts torn in every way. So fairy, cross the Mersey. Cause this land's the place I love. And here I'll stay. Like a glass of water, will you? People, they rush everywhere, each with their own secret care. So fairy, cross the Mersey. You all right? And always take me there. That's the place I love. <laughs> And finally, finally, Graham, will you please accompany Los Del Rio singing Macarena? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> 
I dance, they call me Macarena, and the boys they say que es de buena. They all want me, they can have me, so they all come and dance beside me. Move with me, chant with me, and if you're good, I'll take you home with me. Oh, I'll get you a better Macarena. It ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. Now don't you worry about my boyfriend, the boy whose name is Vittorino. I don't want him, couldn't stand him. He was no good, so I ha 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 ha. Now, come on, what was I supposed to do? He was out of town and his two friends were so fine. Oh, will you look for water, poor little man, Rena? Never mind. We go on to our next round, which is called Sound Charades, and in it our teams must take it in turns to act out the title of a film, book, play, or program using a mouth-related process that scientists refer to as speaking. <laughs> and the other team should try to guess what it is. The round Sound Charades is a close relative of sound athletics, in which Barry describes himself running at 100 metres, and we have to guess how long he'll be in hospital. <laughs> Barry and Graham, you're going to start. Your title will now be relayed to our theatre audience via the thermal imaging magic of our giant computer-generated satellite-linked hologram projection screen, <laughs> made possible by the BBC's substantial investment in digital technology. <laughs> and for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. Train spotting. Train spotting. You're guessing this one, Tim and Willie. Oh, oh. So start, uh, Barry. And well, what is it? A, a book or a film or what? It's a film. Okay. How many words? It's actually one. And uh, was a book? Mm. Is it not? Yes. And it's now become a play. Indeed. <coughs> Here we go. Here book, we go. The book of a film, or the film, the film was a book before it became a play after the film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Here we go. Here we go. <coughs> Oh, you would the bride or groom, sir. No, no, I'm just here to watch. It's, oh, uh, it's a hobby of mine. My, yeah? This is my 20th wedding this week, you know. 20th? My, my goodness, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, what exactly are you here to watch? Well, my particular interest is brides' outfits, you see. <laughs> I see, yes. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> You see that? You see that behind her? That's a two seven zero second this week. Well, it's, it's very attractive. Yes. This was one in Hounslow earlier this week, Tuesday, if I don't tell a lie. Uh, let me get my trusty camcorder out of my anorak. Whoops! Drop the sandwiches again. Um, excuse me, sir, but I, I, I wonder if I could possibly ask you to. Uh, Go away. No, no, I've <laughs> got to dash anyway. Got a double wedding at St. Michael's, though. They might have a 279 and a 326 combination. <laughs> Cheerio. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> Train spotting. <laughs> Your turn, Tim and Willie. Your titles are being displayed on the thermal imager, and here again is the mystery voice for you listeners at home. Lone Star. Lone Star. Okay, what is it? A book or what? It's a film, two mm -hmm. words, and it's all done in one, and it starts now. Uh, Clint, uh, Clint? Yeah? <laughs> um, lend us a fiver. That's it. That's, well, there could be another line. Wasn't that good? No, I, I left it out of... Minimalism is all the rage nowadays. <laughs> Two words. Clint. Clint. Is Clint important to it, or could it be Not. another? <laughs> it could be another of the same type. Star. Ah. 
<laughs> we think it's Lone Star. Huh? Right, now it's time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. But before we do, before we do, I've noticed our mailbag has once more been flooded with a card <laughs> from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales, who warns against the effect of an unhealthy diet. Dear Melvin, she writes. The doctor has told me I must stop eating a sweet after each meal. He said if I carried on much longer, we'd have no furniture left at all. <laughs> P.S. P.S. Who can forget Leeds to Liverpool 47? <laughs> what a great road sign that was. <laughs> on, with the... <laughs> on with the game then. On with the game. A, a... This is a regional variation, which I'm pleased to observe is played here in Liverpool. It's more refined than our regular game, having been imported from London by stokers on the great steam cargo ships of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Obvious differences are when a player is stymied by his immediate opponent, this is known as mating, and when a player's route is blocked, this is known as docking. If a player is both mated and docked, then he's in Hessel time <laughs> and forced to miss a turn okay teams let's see how you get on Tim will you start please um Charing Cross London Road ah um <clears throat> already problems no yeah um um on the Bond Street that's yeah. good. That's no, good. good. Mm. No, stop shooting. Mm. <laughs> Careful. They've been right. playing with it for years. Yes. They know what they're doing. I, I do, so I'm going to go to Fairlop. Good. Is he, is he docked, do you think? He got him. Sort of, but not mm. right. Portobello Crescent. Oh. Mate, surely. No. Yes. Mated. No, because you were docked before. Not quite. What? No, you weren't. You, they weren't docked before. Well, even Willie agrees on this one. That's a no, mate. He, no, he didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, I no. thought you were concur. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. Perhaps we could have a replay. Can we have a, a decision, Hum, please? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it wasn't uh, what you said. <laughs> He is like a hawk. I think it's your move, isn't it? Barry? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Those who don't will to live here. Because um, there are people out there that got the whole kitchen table cleared. Well, I'll... And the whole okay. map of Europe stretched right. through. <laughs> Remembering where we are, this could do it. Scotland Road. Case of... No. No, you can't do that. He was just trying to grovel yeah. before the level. It was. It was a fawning move. <laughs> Come on, I don't Barry, know. I come think on, right. I think they're right. Properly. Hmm. Uh, some of us are playing it properly, and some of us are just chivying and nitpicking and <laughs> messing about, losing all the fun of it. You're in Heseltown and you've got to miss a turn. Quite right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. You are. I've been studying the rules. Loose their trousers and open the garden centre. So carry on, uh, Willie. Willie. Wilsdon Green. Turnham Green. <laughs> we have done. Hollycroft Avenue. No, I know, I know. Oh, I'm not going. So you get another turn, Willie. Oh, nice. Oh, this could be it then. Wu P, stand by. Prepare your lips. We have them. They are in a mess. The hot and tots around them. The Gatling is stuck. Yeah. We, we've got them. Notting Hill Gate. Mornington Crescent. Ah! <laughs> and you criticise me. I scored the winner with only ten men playing too, that's great. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that. The next round is our regular poetry spot. Our teams, there's, there's nothing that truly beats a great rhyme. 
as once I thought, reading a sonnet from the page that had it on it. <laughs> this week our featured verse is the five-line nonsense poem, taking its name from Ireland's unofficial nonsense capital, Liverpool. <laughs> or, as it's often known, the Limerick. Teams, I shall furnish you each with a fruitful first line, which I'd like you to complete in limerick form, taking one line each. We're going to start with you, Willie. I once had a blind date with Scylla. <laughs> I oh. once had a blind date with Scylla. I took her to watch Aston Villa. <laughs> she sang to the crowd. And she sang very loud. <laughs> And that's why they threatened to kill her. <laughs> OK, your turn, uh, Graham. I once had a trial with Bill Shankly. At the end, he just looked at me blankly. <laughs> Said, you're no Roger Hunt. <laughs> I'll be blunt. <laughs> You're absolute rubbish, quite frankly. <laughs> okay, Barry, here's yours. We went to a show with Ken Dodd. We went to a show with Ken Dodd. The usherette said, Oh my God. <laughs> He'll go on for years. <laughs> and he's bound to sing tears. <laughs> when he finishes, give us a prod. <laughs> Finally, Tim, here's yours. Out drinking with Bruce Grobola. <laughs> he paid with some cash from a jar. <laughs> He said, see, I saved this. <laughs> so I gave him a kiss. <laughs> and he tipped himself over the bar. <laughs> right, well, the next round is a musical one called Just a Minim. And as you'd expect, it's based on the hilarious panel game hosted by Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> The original, the original is called Just a Minute, a title which I understand first occurred to Mrs. Parsons on their wedding night. <laughs> In our game teams, I'd like you each to sing a song without hesitation, deviation, hesitation, deviation, hesitation, or worst of all, repetition. I say worst of all, but I see it's now time to introduce Colin Sell at the piano. Incidentally, Colin was telling me before the show that he's recently mastered the complexities of the ring cycle. So if anyone needs their washing machine repaired, <laughs> give him a call. Okay, well, the song is Twist and Shout, and Tim and Willie, will you start, please? What's us shake it up, baby, now. Wax is about, dear. Twist and shout, rise and cry. Come on, pull your finger out, small. Do it, whatever you will, infant. <laughs> um, rise and uh, <sighs> do several. Shambles there from Barry Cry. Shambles, absolute shambles. <laughs> Hesitation, <laughs> deviation, repetition. Nothing to do with shambles. It just isn't in the rules. Which of those was it? Hesitation. Repetition of shambles. <laughs> It was a bit of a disaster, told me. Overruled, you. overruled. Carry on, Willie. Well, where are you, Colin? Just a minute, Every time they say, well, let's work it on out. Hey, uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> you know, you're on my own, going. You 
know you got me going now. I'm going to be just like I knew you would. I thought you would think this way. Challenge. Everybody all around. Challenge. He's roaring. I was trying to disguise the fact I was seeing the same line again. <laughs> this game would be much easier for all of us if Colin Sell would stop banging on regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Just all your, all your thoughts go out of your head. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Carry on, Barry, then. What? It's... Challenge. Where are Hesitation. we? Hesitation. Yes, quite right. Muffled. <laughs> Carry on, Willie. You know you're crazy, little girl. Put it in your arms. You know you're crazy, little girl. Put it in your arms. You know you're crazy, little girl. Now it says here, if there's time, you might try another. Well, there isn't time. No. no. <laughs> That's almost the end of the show, but there's still uh, time, I think, to squeeze in one last round of Butcher's Songbook. <laughs> Teams, I'd like you please to suggest some titles of songs likely to prove popular with an audience drawn from the meat trade. Barry, will you start, please? Gristle while you work. <laughs> it's a German Second World War Butcher's song. <laughs> Veal meat again. <laughs> Never mind the bullocks. It's the sex pistols. Someday my mince will come. When, when, when I wristles are smiling. <laughs> I got plenty of mutton. From Porky and Bess. New pork, new pork. So good they ate it twice. <laughs> It's a Hong Kong song. How much is that dog in the window? <laughs> the best of Abba Twa. <laughs> there will be never be another you. <laughs> oh, I'm back in the saddle of lamb. <laughs> Sung by Meatloaf. <laughs> Joseph and his amazingly technicolored coloured coat. I wish I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't wasn't no. Meatloaf the artist formerly known as Mint? <laughs> the Dance of the Seven Veals from the opera Salami. <laughs> from Russia with Love. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, kid, kidneys up, Mother Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Sirloin, it's been good to gnaw you. <laughs> well, as the fluff ball of time pops out of the navel of destiny. <laughs> And the nylon underpants of fate ride uncomfortably up the cleft of despair. <laughs> I notice we've come to the end of another programme. So from Samantha of the teams, myself and the good people of Liverpool, goodbye. Timber Taylor, Barry Cryer, Graham Garden and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. A 
at the piano is Colin Sal, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello. Hello, and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the show where fun and laughter go together like a horse and marriage. <laughs> Today we're coming to you from the splendid Royal Theatre in Northampton, a town that's described... Oh. A town that's described as the Naples of the Midlands. As often as Naples is described as the Northampton of Lombardy. Originally, originally called Hampton, or large village, the name Northampton stems from the Viking occupation when it became Norse Hampton. It was in 973 AD that the Saxon King Edgar regained the town from the Norse King Gudrum and freed its captive women folk who were all highly impressed with his victory proclamation, I have the Hampton of a Norse. <laughs> Northampton isn't only famous for visits by old... <laughs> but Northampton isn't only famous for visits by old kings, so let's introduce the teams. <laughs> they are on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and, and on my right, Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor. And the warmest of welcomes, please, for our ever-watchful scorer, the delightful Samantha. <laughs> right, well, our first round is largely self-explanatory, as it's called Round One. <laughs> and appropriately, it involves a game known as Famous First Words. It's come to my attention, teams, that the last words uttered by famous people are generally well-known, but their first are seldom recorded. So with this in mind, I'd like suggestions, please, of first words that might have sprung from the lips of famous people, either still living or guesting on celebrity squares. <laughs> Tim, will you start, please? Paula Yates. Paula? What sort of a name is Paula? <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. No, no, I'll cut the cord and open myself. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. We are a granddaughter. <laughs> Willie. Sir David Frost. Hello, good evening in Talcum. <laughs> uh, John Major. Mum, get off this trapeze. <laughs> My Michael Howard. I'm not coming out till I've served my full term. <laughs> John Redwood. Sorry, wrong planet. <laughs> Michael there. Barrymore. I'm out. <laughs> Saddam Hussein. That was the battle of all mothers. <laughs> Ooh. Jeremy Beadle. And you thought it was just indigestion. <laughs> Julian Clary, never again. <laughs> Any more? Mary Whitehouse, surely there must be a better way than this. <laughs> Our next round is called One Song to the Tune of Another, and it seems that no matter how often I explain this, I always have to run over it again. So. Put simply, we take a song, the one song referred to in the title, then the tune of this first or one song is dispensed with, retaining only the words. So one song actually means one set of words. Now, a set of words to a song without a tune is no good for anyone. So replacement music is required, which is where a second song comes in. And uh, teams, I see you scratching your heads, but that's what the word another alludes to. Song two, or another as we know it, is already equipped with its own set of words, so what we do is pretend it's an instrumental. In other words, teams, another song with a, only a tune to which the one song with only words can be sung. And there it is, in a nutshell, one song to the tune of another. Don't get overconfident, teams, because I've yet to introduce the double handicap system. <laughs> Colin Sell and the piano accompaniment. <laughs> Right. 
Willie, I'd like you to start off by singing the words of Brown Girl in the Ring by Bernie M to the tune of Blue Moon. <laughs> Brown girl in the ring She looks Like a sugar in the plum Plum, plum Show me a motion, tra-la-la Come on, show me a motion Show me a motion, tra-la-la She looks like a sugar in the plum Old headwater run dry nowhere to wash my clothes, old head water run dry, got nowhere. To wash my clothes, I remember. One Saturday night we have fried fish. And Johnny Cakes, I read cakes. Dang, dang. Okay, it's your turn, Barry. Will you please sing Barry Manilow's delightful Bermuda Triangle to the tune of Hey Jude? <laughs> Bermuda <laughs> Triangle It makes people disappear Bermuda Triangle Don't go too near Don't go too near but she doesn't see my angle <laughs> And she thinks I'm being dumb So Bermuda Triangle, here we come Lying with my woman on the island sand I look up and see her with a stranger hand Now, Tim, will you please sing the words of Bat Out of Hell by Meatloaf <laughs> to the tune of Postman Pat? <laughs> like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. When the night is over, like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone, 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 gone. Like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. But when the day, oh, when the day is done and the sun goes down and the moonlight shining through, then like a sinner before the gates of hell, I'll come crawling back to you, you. you. Finally, Graham, will you please sing the words of Driving in My Car by Madness to the tune of La Donna Immobile? <laughs> <coughs> I've been driving in my car. It's not quite a Jaguar. I bought it in Primrose Hill from a bloke from Brazil. It was made in 59 in a factory by the time. It says Morris on the door. The GPO owned it before. I drive in it for my job. The governor calls me a slob. But I don't really care. Give me some gas in the open air. <coughs> It's a bit old, but it's mine. I mend it in my spare time. Just last week I changed the oil, rocket valves and the coil. Last week it went round the clock. I also had a little knock. I didn't hit somebody's fender. He learned not to park on a bender. I like driving in my car. It don't look much, but I've been far. I like driving in my car, even with a flat tire. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, it's now time to play a round called Straight Face. In this round, contestants should take it in turns to exchange individual words on a subject of my choosing, and the object is to fail to get laughs from our theatre audience. The secret, of course, is to avoid inherently funny words like chicken, bottom, and subsidiarity. At last year's Straight Face Olympics, by the way, in Helsinki, our two teams tied for a gold medal, a whisker ahead of Jim Davidson and Malcolm Rifkin. <laughs> Today's subject is farming and agriculture, and remember teams, the merest hint of a titter from our audience will result in immediate disqualification, one by one, and the winner, of course, is the last one to be on the stage, which will be me. <laughs> okay, Graham, will you start, please? Midden. Seed. Heifer. <laughs> Cultural policy. Ah, ah, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Willie, that was, uh, yes, that I, was I, definitely I a titter. Did myself. you hear it? Muffled, but definitely audible. <laughs> okay, so you you have to follow now, and it's you, Graham. Start off. Uh, parlour, mulch, dung, set aside, slurry, tractor, <laughs> barn. Manure. Compost. Nitrate. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> I warned you. I warned you about that. Okay, so it's uh, really between... Who's it between? It's between Graham and Barry. No, you're out, are you, Barry? No. Am I out? Thank you. Okay, Graham and Barry, how exciting. <laughs> Graham. Pig. <laughs> barn. That barn. Uh, didn't no, no rule about repetition in this, is there? <laughs> didn't no. laugh the first time, Too either. <laughs> Silage. <laughs> Gosling. <laughs> Goose. Gander. Wife. <laughs> Farmer's wife. Come on. Son. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've forgotten, the, I've forgotten the rules of this game. You're not alone. <laughs> no, um... Well, you both got had a titter there, yeah. I noticed. Uh, so, uh, Graham, you're disqualifying. <laughs> Carry on, Barry. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. It's time now for a, a new round called Mood Music, in which the teams will have to adapt a scene of my choosing to fit a random selection of backing music. It shouldn't be confused with another game called Mood Music, which is a regular highlight of the Royal Agricultural Show. <laughs> In this round, teams, I shall provide each team with a situation which I'd like you to start to enact. However, at certain unscheduled points, a selection of mood music will be played in, and you should attempt to adapt your scenarios to suit the music provided. So, Tim and Willie, you're to start. I'd like you to assume the roles of a librarian and someone who's come to extend his loan on a book. Um, good morning. Good morning. I wish to extend the loan on my book. <laughs> um, what book would that be then? I mean, uh, I'll be belly dancing in ten easy lessons. Uh, my flesh of a whip bread. It, it, it's an excellent book, but I, I'm a very slow reader and I'd like, I'd like to keep it for four or five years. I'm afraid you can't extend your loan, but perhaps I could insist you um, in something else, like... Um... Uh, Mr. McPhess! Mr. McPhess! I told you not to play the bagpipes in the library, Mr. McPherson. <laughs> Sorry, it was saying. 
And that goes for you, Mr. Portillo, as well. <laughs> What, 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 what I would really like, Mr. Librarian, is, 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 is to know what happened to the love of my life. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley of No Fixed Abode. <laughs> oh, Mrs. oh, it's miles away, sorry. Oh. Mrs. Bradley, you say? Yes. <laughs> I married her. <laughs> your turn. Your turn, Barry and Graham. I'd like you now to take the roles of a traffic policeman and a motorist who's just been stopped. When you're ready, off you go. <laughs> oh, Lord, what is it now? Well, you sit there very cool, calm and collected, sir, with your cheroot. <laughs> Not a word with you, sir. Uh, uh, but I've just lit up. Look, um, look, if it's about my rear light, I can explain that. Or, or, the, or the muddy number plates, is that it? No, and it's not your rear view mirror missing on the driver's side, sir. No. Tell you. <laughs> Mainly to do with you playing an accordion while driving on the M1. <laughs> ah. Uh, well, officer, look here. I can explain that. You will, sir. You will. Uh, could I ask you to uh, step out of the car? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Stop hopping about, sir. Stop hopping about. Yep. Don't wave those. <laughs> Don't wave those two sticks at me. You'll have somebody's eye out. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. Then pull your shirt down. That's not funny. <laughs> My God, we'll stay in your navel. What? What? Ah! Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a precious gem or jewel. I hope you're not offering me a bribe, sir. <laughs> Perish the thought, officer. Hey, where do you... Where do you think you're going? Well, hang on a minute. I've got to put on these flares. <laughs> this cravat, and I've got to wait until the dolly bird arrives. Oh, here she is now. Bye! Typical. <laughs> right, well, it's now time for an interesting round called Radio Jigsaw. <laughs> it shouldn't be confused, of course, with the panel game featuring Ken Russell, David Miller, and Polly Yates. That's Radio Eyesaw. <laughs> This is, a, this is a round we've been playing for some time now in which the teams attempt to complete my favourite jigsaw. It's a 3,000-piece puzzle of Constable Sir Hay Wayne. Last week, after 24 years, we very nearly completed the edges. So, OK, teams, if you care to spread the remaining pieces out, let's see what we've got. Tim and Willie, any ideas? There's a phone booth. <laughs> Can't be right, it's not a red one. This could be Wayne, yeah? <laughs> I've got a corner here. It says, made in Great Britain art. We've done the corners. <laughs> so it must be from another jigsaw. <laughs> um, what's that over there? Is that, that could go together with that. That's got an eye. Oh. Foot and a... It's no. nice. Oh, it doesn't go. No. no. You stuck? Yep. Yeah. All right, Barry and Graham, see if you can do any better. No. Is that an edge? No, it's a bush. No. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a lot of bushes in yeah. here. You've got a hammer. What? On me? Yeah. What, or in the jigsaw? No, no, to make it fit. Oh, right. <laughs> Those pieces are from this jigsaw. Which? Those Greek. six, what seven. Are they? Well, I think it's the Linford Christie jigsaw, that one. <laughs> About 11 pieces there that don't belong in the hayway. I'll hide that down as an oak. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a wheel? There's no. a wheel there, look. That's just where I caught my hand. Eh? Oh, right. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get much further this week, do you? OK, well, if you care to pass the pieces back to Samantha, she'll be yeah. awarding points. <laughs> oh, dear, she's dropped them.
What a shame. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on to a round called New Musical Combinations, featuring popular combos from the past, but incorporating an improbable non-musical member. Which reminds me, Colin Sell is once again at the piano. <laughs> And with exciting career news, he tells me that he's recently started to work with pop sensation Bjork. So now he's making regular trips to Iceland. Or if they're shut, he goes to BJ. <laughs> right, we'll start with you, Tim and Willie, and I'd like you to assume the identities of that not-so-well-known double act, Flanagan and Alan Wicker. <laughs> singing Underneath the Arches. This is my first interview with a poor person. Uh, where am I? Underneath the arches. What are you doing? I dream my dreams away. Where did you say you were? Underneath the arches. What are you lying on? Oh, cobblestones I lay. Do you do this often? Every night you'll find me. How are you? Tired out and warm. Don't you ever cheer up? Happy when the daylight comes creeping, heralding the dawn. How do you occupy yourself? Sleeping when it's raining. What do you do when it's fine? And sleeping when it's fine. <laughs> what is that noise? Rain rattling by a bar I'm giving this up. I'm going back to Jersey where I can speak to very, very rich people like myself. No matter they know where I'm going. Whatsoever. Underneath the arch. Oh, what are you doing? I dream my oh, silly poor person. Okay, your turn, Barry and Graham. I'd like you to be that popular musical partnership, Rene and rent a cab <laughs> Singing your big hit, Save Your Love. Save your love, my darling, save your love. Vulture, vulture. Oh, summer nights with the moon and stars above. Forty-two, vulture, where are you? Serenade. Long to sing you the reddest rose I always bring you. Said your love for Roma and for me. Watchwords, watchwords by the bridge, I told you. Even though it's been so very long. Roger, 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 Roger. The memory right, of love still lingers on. He's outside the ancient wine line. I can't wait to hold and kiss Wait you don't say you yeah. know how much I miss you. Ooh. Darling, sing for me a love of song. Yeah. Tell a lie. Salva l'amore, cara, salva l'amore. Ferret and follicle on the corner. Let us eat this demand, let's tell us all. Follicle, you bird. A serenade, a long He's there now. A rare throat, I always preach. He's taking his trousers off. Teams, we certainly got through a lot of awful games today. <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. I think I misread that. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's almost time to say goodbye, but not before we fitted in a final round of Builders Film Club. So, teams, while Samantha nips out to meet a roofer in order to get felt laid down in the loft. <laughs> You please. I'd like you please to provide us with some film titles likely to prove popular with an audience. <laughs> Tell you what, let's switch the camera. Switch the camera. <laughs> this happened to James Nochte the other day. Yeah, did you hear that? Yes. Oh, he did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor McDonald got Kent Countryside wrong on News at 10. <laughs> Thank you.
I'd like you please to provide us with some film titles like you to prove. <laughs> The thing is, he's going out live, really. <laughs> it will be at this rate. <laughs> right. I'd like you, please, to provide us with some film titles likely to prove popular with an audience drawn from the building. <laughs> Sorry, what was that again? <laughs> I'd like you, please, to provide us with some film titles likely to prove popular with an audience drawn from the building trade. Barry, will you? Barry, will you start, please? All about Eves. <laughs> Grouch expectations. <laughs> the, uh, the Turn of the Screw, which is a Hammer film starring Christopher Plummer. <laughs> Actually, there was a Builders Film Festival last weekend. Oh, yes. But they didn't turn up till Wednesday. <laughs> One cuckoo's nest over the flu. <laughs> Rebel without a damp course. <laughs> Pebble Dash Gordon. <laughs> Oh, flush gone. <laughs> One we've all been waiting for. Bring me the heart of Alfredo Garcia. <laughs> Schindler's <laughs> Loft conversion. <laughs> Making good the bad and the ugly. <laughs> Robert Bitumen in Ryan's Mortar. <laughs> Riot in Breeze Block 11. <laughs> Gerda on the Orient Express. <laughs> By A. Gutter Christie. <laughs> and a rivet runs through it. <laughs> James Masonette in A Stare Is Born. <laughs> the Magnificent Cement. <laughs> I beg your pardon. That's it. Hail the concrete hero comes. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, as the loose bowled pigeon of time swoops low over the tourist of destiny. <laughs> And the unlicensed minicab of fate gets lost in the one-way system of eternity. I notice it's time for the end of the show. So from me, Samantha, the teams, and the good people of Northampton, goodbye. Tim Brooke Taylor, Barry Trier, Graham Garden, and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The program consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't a clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the show that does for comedy what Austin did for the Mini and what Bronte did for the Ford Cortina. Once more, we're broadcasting to you amidst the ancient splendor of Northampton's Royal Theatre. The town is... Oh, lovely. You did that last week. The town is ideally placed to offer much to the intrepid Midlands tourist. But a few miles away is rugby school, where during a football match in 1807, a player picked up the ball and ran with it, thus creating the great British sporting tradition of being sent off for descent after a deliberate <laughs> handball. A few miles to the south of here, punters flock most weekends to enjoy the toaster races. 
followed by the food mixer hurdles and the three... <laughs> and the three-year-old washing machine handicap. <laughs> but Northampton itself is, of course, most famous as the home of Britain's most established boot and shoe manufacturers. And visitors today on the lookout for a lot of old cobblers <laughs> will know not to be disappointed when I introduce our teams. <laughs> They are on my right. Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor. And on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And would you please welcome our scorer, the very delightful Samantha. Shut up. We're going to start with a round called Historical Headlines. In this round, teams, I'd like you please to suggest likely newspaper headlines that one might have found in the morning papers after a certain historical event. The event is the assassination of Julius Caesar. Barry, will you start, please? Uh, the sun. Brutus splashed it all over. <laughs> the Daily Mirror. Julius Caesar is Ides' victim. <laughs> Sunday Sport, Brutus at two hamsters. <laughs> the Lancashire Evening Post, Mark Antony comes to Berry. <laughs> the Guardian had an apology, actually. Yesterday's headline should have read, Caesar Slade, not Caesar Salad. <laughs> Daily Telegraph, new Caesar, new danger. <laughs> the Rome Standard, Omnia Caesar in tres partes divisa est. <laughs> the Daily Whoops. Star, Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. Is it bulimia? Taylor and Cutter, Sketchley's opens new branch in Rome. <laughs> Any more? Well, I tell you what, I'm enjoying that so much that uh, <laughs> we'll have another one. And this time the event is the death of Samson. <laughs> right, well, the next round. <laughs> the Times. Um, Samson obituary, two columns, page eight. <laughs> New Musical Express, oh, 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 Delilah. <laughs> the Guardian, yesterday's feature headed Delia's hints on kippers. <laughs> Should have read Delilah's hints on clippers. <laughs> Can one believe two corrections in one day in The Guardian? In yesterday's report, Delilah's statement should have read, I love cutting men's locks off. <laughs> Not socks. The Telegraph police chief says he was a accident waiting to happen. <laughs> All done? Okay, it's time now to play a popular round Oh, sorry, one from the Daily Express, Humph. Yeah. That'd be good. Band scissors campaign grows. <laughs> now it's time to play a popular round called Pick Up Song, in which our teams take it in turns to sing along to some of my favourite gramophone records. At a given point, DJ Samantha will turn down the volume. Not easy, as she isn't used to turning things down. <laughs> Teams, you must keep singing, and if, the, if on the music return you're within an amoeba's toenail of the original, I shall be awarding points, and points, as every school child knows, means prizes. What do points mean? Prizes! Bring back the cane, I say. <laughs> 
this prize, uh, this week's prize is something so comfortable to sit on, it'll make you feel like royalty. It's the Parker Bowles recliner. <laughs> Okay, Willie, you're to start. I'd like you please to accompany Buddy Holly singing Raining in My Heart. The sun is, is out, out, the sky is blue, there's not, not a cloud to spoil the view, but it's way beyond raining, <laughs> raining in my heart. The weatherman says clear today He doesn't know you've gone away And it's raining Raining in my heart Oh, misery Misery What's gonna be done of me? I tell my friends they must and I tell my friends <laughs> yeah. It's slower than you. I know. <laughs> He's more dead than I am. <laughs> okay, it's your turn, your turn, Barry. I'd like you to accompany Little Richard singing Long Tall Sally. <laughs> He has a misery, but he has a lot of fun, oh baby. Yeah, baby. Woo, baby. Have a Mr. Fun tonight. Well, Long Tom Sally, she's built for speed. She's got everything that Uncle John needs, oh baby. Yeah, baby. Woo, baby. Have a Mr. Fun tonight. Yeah. Well, so Uncle John, the bald head Sally, he saw a Mary coming and he jumped like in the alley. Oh, baby! Yes, baby! Oh, baby! baby. Yeah. Okay, Graham, would you please accompany Eddie Cochran singing Three Steps to Heaven? Are three steps to heaven. And just listen, and you will plainly see. And as life travels on, and things do go wrong, just follow steps one, two, and three. <laughs> Step one, you find a girl you love. Step two, she falls in love with you. Step three, you kiss and hold her tightly. He's in league with the devil. <laughs> Finally, Tim, I'd like you to sing one of my favorite numbers by The Clash. <laughs> London calling to the faraway towns. Now war is declared and battle come down. London calling to the underworld. Come out of the cupboard, you boys and girls. A London calling now, don't look to us. Phony Beatlemania has bitten the dust. A London calling, see if you ain't got no swing. Except for the ring of the truncheon thing. The ice age is coming, the sun tuning in. Right. Meltdown expected, <laughs> the wheat is growing thin. Engines stop running, but I have no fear, cause London is drowning and I'm Funny I've gone off that song. 
Our next round is called Sound Charades. It's based on the erstwhile TV show called Give Us a Clue, starring Lionel Blair, who I understand once worked in this very theatre. Indeed, backstage staff still consider the role he essayed here as the very peak of his professional achievement when he spoke the immortal line, So, that's two with milk and one with sugar. <laughs> Now, everyone who literally wept with laughter when Give Us the Clue was on was obviously watching the other side. <laughs> so, we'll need something by way of explanation. The round is similar to the parlour game called Charades, where players take it in turns to convey the title of a well-known film, book, play or programme for the others to guess. However, in our version, team members are permitted the use of their mouths. So, Tim and Willie, you're to start. Your title is now going to be relayed to our theatre audience via the digital interface, multi-screen, sense-around projection system, <laughs> so generously funded by our hosts. <laughs> and for listeners at home, here's the mystery voice. The Simpsons. The Simpsons. Right, you're guessing this one, Barry and Graham, and uh, uh, off you go, Tim and Willie. Okay, this is two words. It's a television programme, and it starts like this. Surely she's not going to marry that dysfunctional, upper-class, chinless wonder from London, England land? What I ask you was the matter with Gromit. <laughs> Cracking cheese, Wallace. What a giveaway! <laughs> Do <laughs> at the end. Not Wallace and Gromit, uh, but no, no. The odd couple is three words. Chinless, chin. Hmm. Uh, what are they? They're puppets. <laughs> no, they're not. You silly clapper. <laughs> Cartoons. Oh. Yeah. Is one of the two words cartoon? No. no it's, not <laughs> it's not Potter's wheel either. <laughs> Wallace could be a clue. That was um, another headline from The Guardian. It, it was uh, Edward VIII to marry Wallace Sampson. <laughs> uh, was that a clue? No, not much of one. <laughs> two words. Two words. Not yes. a king's story, that's three. Um, well, he took her name. Does that describe it to... The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was God. painful. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn, Barry and Graham. Now, your title's being displayed on the projection screen, and here, again, is the mystery voice for listeners at home. Wind in the Willows. Wind in the Willows. What is it? What is it? A, a, God, no. a film, a book, it's or a film? What? It's four words and a book. <laughs> and been a play in its time, I remember. And four words and a book. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, good morning. Ah, oh, good morning, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'd like to buy a cricket bat, please. A cricket bat? We have a very wide selection here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serving a customer in here. <laughs> Sorry about that, sir. Perhaps I can show you some... Um... <laughs> Reg, it's called Can't You Go Outside or something. <laughs> do. Do apologise, sir. Here we are. Now, look at this one, sir. Here we've got the Compton Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Reg, if you don't stop that, I'm going to come up and take that trombone away from you. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Off you go, Tim and Willie. Go on. Bats in the belfry or something. <laughs> <laughs> trombone in the willow. Bats. Yes, that's it. <laughs> You're so close. <laughs> <laughs> trombone in, in the... the... <laughs> Could it be possibly wind in the willows? Right? Oh. 
Now it's time to play the game called Mornington Crescent. <laughs> but first, first I noticed from my laptop that we have an email from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales. <laughs> who's visited our website with some advice for young couples setting up home together for the first time. Dear Mr. Nocte, she writes. <laughs> Ignore those trendies who say size isn't important. I believed that, and then my new wallpaper fell off. Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis at dot n wales dot bracket slash slash dot dot <laughs> co uk stroke hinge stroke bracket. <laughs> okay, on with the on with the game teams. And this week we'll be playing the old Watling Street variation, which means that players may only take the direct route between any two given points. Thus, looped moves are disallowed, and the circle line is out of bounds. Oh, and you may huff. Okay, Tim, will you start, please? Euston Square. Upper Mount. <laughs> Paddington Street. Thank you. <laughs> An aficionado. <clears throat> no, a loony. <laughs> the worst move you have ever no, made. No, it's it, fine. It's actually excellent. Indeed it was, because I huff you. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, huff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. I thought I'd pulled. <laughs> it's so long since I played this... So long since I played this game. What happens when you huff? Don't look at me. <laughs> well, it's Barry's turn, of course. It goes back. Oh, yes, that's right. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. It's looped. Yeah, yeah. So it's me? Yep. Yes, you. Cheney Walk. Except loops are disallowed. <laughs> Not there. Not after a huff, though. <laughs> Loop. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You wait can a have minute. a loop. You can have a loop after the huff. But only the all one. All right, all right, all right. You say that with great Just confidence. the one. I know that. It's the only thing I know, really. <laughs> Wish I hadn't huffed now. <laughs> Go ahead, Barry. York Road. King Street, Hammersmith. Fairlop. Upper Wimpole Street. Oh, that's thrown him back onto his heels. Mm. <laughs> Derngate. <laughs> that's a loop ah, move. Shot a, I'd hardly call that direct Barry. move. <laughs> this is a loop move. Northamptonshire seems to be slightly out of our orbit. <laughs> And also groveling yet Not again to the orbit. <laughs> there is no secret path than I. <laughs> Driving round, I was all day. Where's there a car park, park open? <laughs> You've got to stop this Let's turd start. crawling. <laughs> nice of you to pick me up there. I should have told you. <laughs> Not I... great, but I'm reasonable. <laughs> Carry on. Whose turn? Perrin's walk. Your turn, Tim. <laughs> um, Frank. Aldrich. Blackfriars. What? Blackfriars. <laughs> Bank. Mornington Crescent. Oh. Oh. He should have 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 you could have jumped in with a half there, Greg. He should have huffed. He should have huffed. Oh, I've got into enough of a mess with the first half. I was <laughs> huff again. It's time now for a round. Game of two huffs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now it's time for a round of limericks. Those cheeky five-line verses originally devised by an Irishman, who chose to name them after the town closest to his heart. That was, of course, the town of Lima in Peru. <laughs> Teams, I shall furnish you each with a promising first line, which I'd then like you to complete, taking one line each. And in celebration of Northampton's undisputed status as shoe capital of the Midlands, this week's theme will be footwear. Graham, here's a line for you. I once found my pet puss in boots. 
buying condoms and herbal cheroots. <laughs> I said, naughty cat, you mustn't do that. I think there are a couple of fruits. <laughs> Jimmy, here's one for you. Whenever I wear my new clogs... Whenever I wear my new clogs... I'm followed by frisky young dogs. <laughs> one started to beg... and cocked his leg. <laughs> and dampened the hem of my togs. <laughs> Barry, yours is, you won't guess what I keep in my wellies. <laughs> Three tarts and a couple of jellies. <laughs> a Cadbury's flake. <laughs> and a portion of hake. <laughs> and an old spotted dick of George Mellis. <laughs> Willie, finally, here's yours. Whenever I wear winkle pickers... Whenever I wear winkle pickers, I know the footsteps behind of the pickers. <laughs> it's the backs of my shoes. He likes to peruse. <laughs> or perhaps it's the cut of my knickers. <laughs> OK, we're going to hurry on to a round called Just a Minute, which, as you'll guess, is based on the amusing panel game Just a Minute. The original game stars the great Nicholas Parsons and comprises a series of one-minute gibberish ramblings interrupted only by the contestants trying to get a word in age race. <laughs> Ours is a musical version, teams, in which you'll be required to sing a song of my choosing without hesitation, repetition, boutros, boutros, gali, or deviation. <laughs> However, one deviation I'm obliged to overlook is the piano accompaniment of Colin Sell. <laughs> Actually, Col Colin tells me that during recent performances he's become noted for his clever use of harmony. Apparently he finds it keeps the fringe out of his... <laughs> And gives total control without ever becoming greasy. <laughs> right, the song is Let's Call the Whole Thing Off, and Barry, it's uh, your turn, so your time starts now. You say Eva. I say Eva. <laughs> Challenge there from Tim. Repetition of say, yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> Listen, it's up to me to decide if it's true or not. <laughs> Tim, you take up the song. Well spotted, Tim. You say either, and I pronounce either. Someone espouses neither, and I enunciate Ra neither. Repetition Barry. of I, wasn't it? Aye, yeah. aye. Aye, aye. That's my lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to carry on from where the last person stopped, actually. Sorry? Who That's Colin that? Sell, isn't it? <laughs> That's why care in the community, they look what happened. <laughs> I'm the chairman, and I say they can pick it up wherever they damn well like. <laughs> well. Where are we going from then, Hump? Last word. <laughs> Don't you hump me. Go on, Barry. What? Oh, it's me, is it? Where were we? <laughs> Ask <What>? us. <laughs> Challenge from Tim. Hesitation. <laughs> and, and not listening. I was asking where we got to. There's been so much. About there, I think. Yeah, that's right. Let's call the whole thing off. Eve. <laughs> Ether, chloroform, <laughs> nether, lava. Let's ab abandon the entire project. 
He hasn't said, let's call the whole thing off yet, so why don't you change it? <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't... It's deviation. You don't have to. Yes, you do. Actually, he said, do, let's, let's abandon the whole project. Which, which he I, should have said about third time round. That's the sensibly thing yeah, he yeah, said but... all night. <laughs> Well, teams, as I see it, don't you? As I was saying when I was so rudely interrupted, <laughs> as I see it, only remains for me to ask you for your topical gardening tips. It must mean we've been recording the wrong program for the last half hour, and that it's nearly the end of the show. But we won't go before playing one last round, and it's called Dog Fancier's Songbook. So, as Samantha tells me, it's time to let her whip it out. <laughs> I'd like you teams to get on with suggesting some song titles likely to prove popular with an audience of dog lovers. Barry, you ought to start this one. Um... If I was a bitch man, poodle doodle 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 doodle. That, that comes, comes from Fiddler on the Woof. <laughs> Pekingese up Mother Brown. <laughs> Daydream Retriever <laughs> by the Mongrels. Dog Fancier's favourite groups include the Pointer Sisters. Vet, vet, vet. <laughs> and there's a good boy zone. <laughs> Making whoopsie. <laughs> good there. collie, Miss Molly. <laughs> They're rushing out by the Beagles anthology, <laughs> featuring Hey Chewed. <laughs> Are they going to do Oh, Mr. Postman? <laughs> <laughs> They're doing Labrador Rigby. <laughs> A little whelp from my friends. <laughs> by Joe Cocker. Tom Bone singing My, 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 Rottweiler. <laughs> the miniature schnauzer, the joy... <laughs> Pitbulls. Pitbulls, who need pitbulls? <laughs> I'm going to sit right down and breed myself a setter. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, as the salad fork of time lifts aloft the hidden slug of fate towards the open mouth of eternity, and the hibernating tortoise of hope explodes in the microwave of infinity. <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show, so join us again next week when we'll be in Cambridge. Until then, from Samantha, the teams, myself, and the good people of Northampton, goodbye. Tim Brooke Taylor, Barry Trier, Graham Garden, and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>
The theatre opened in 1936, but after nearly 60 years of non-stop top-quality shows, <laughs> it had to close for refurbishment, during which six million pounds of national lottery cash was spent. Little wonder, then, there was nothing left to afford another top-quality show <laughs> with which to reopen today. They've certainly done a marvellous job on the place, and I understand that several quaint original pre-war features came to light during building work. <laughs> Let me point out four of them. <laughs> on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. And on my right, Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> and a warm welcome, please, for the lady who scores wherever we go, the delightful Samantha. <laughs> Right, teams, let's start with a round of Wuthering Hillocks, derived from that famous Bronte title, Jane Eyre. <laughs> Interestingly, many listeners don't know the derivation of the word Wuthering, but according to my dictionary, it means of the wind blowing strongly with a roaring sound. How much nicer in the polite society of those days to say, pardon me, I've got a touch of the Wuthering. <laughs> On with the game teams, and as the title indicates, I'd like suggestions, please, of low-budget remakes of popular films or books. Barry, will you start, please? The Madness of Thora Hurt. <laughs> Nanook of the North Circular. <laughs> the Island of Dr. Marwini. One Dalmatian. <laughs> Good morning, West Ham. <laughs> A tale of two citrus fruits. <laughs> it was the best of limes, it was the worst of limes. <laughs> Bring me the headscarf of Alfredo Garza. <laughs> Bonnie and Clive Anderson. Charlotte's website. <laughs> uh, I am a fugitive from a chain store. <laughs> well, our next game is a musical one with a title that the unwary might think speaks for itself. It's called One Song to the Tune of Another. <laughs> now, how can, I, how can I explain this simply? Despite the title, each contestant will be allocated two songs or words sung to music, but from one he'll concentrate only on the lyrics while trying to disregard the tune, and from the other he'll focus on the music while ignoring the words. I know what you're thinking, teams. <laughs> which one is which? Well, the first or one song is the set of words sung to music which no longer has the tune, and the second or another, as we know it, is the tune to some words without the lyrics but retaining the music. All you have to do is put them together. In other words, Literally, one song to the tune of another. <laughs> but don't be lulled into a false sense of security, team, <laughs> as you'll be accompanied at the piano by Colin Sell, <laughs> whose playing speaks for itself, usually in Swahili. <laughs> right, Barry, you ought to start. Would you please sing I Am the Cider Drinker by the Wurzels to the tune of Beethoven's Ode to Joy? Cider drinker, I drink it all of the day. 
Okay, it's your turn, Tim. Would you please sing Knees Up, Mother Brown to the tune of Land of Hope and Glory? <laughs> Willie, will you please sing YMCA by the village people <laughs> to the tune of Green Sleeves? <laughs> it's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. They have everything for young men to enjoy. You can hang out with all the boys. <laughs> fun to stay at the YMCA. It is fun to stay at the YMCA. You can get yourself clean. You can have a good meal. You can do whatever you feel. No man there is it by himself. I said, young man, put your pride on the shelf and just go there to the YMCA. I'm sure they can help you today. And, and finally, it's you, Graham. Will you please sing the words of I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts to the tune of the Toreador song from Cup. <laughs> A lovely bunch of coconuts There they are Standing in a row Big One small, one some as big as your head Give them a twist A flick of the wrist That's what the showman said I've got a lovely Bunch of coconuts I've got a lovely Bunch of coconuts Every ball you throw Will make me win my wife, the idol of me life, singing roll a ball, a ball, a penny a peach. Roll a ball, a ball, a penny a peach. Roll a ball, a ball, a penny a peach. Right, it's now time to play a round called Straight Face. It's a game we've created specially, the object of which is for the teams not to get laughs from our theatre audience. Well, needs must. <laughs> Any player who elicits the faintest hint of a titter will face immediate disqualification. Right, teams, I'd now like you please to take it in turns to exchange humour-free words, beginning with a certain letter of the alphabet, which I shall now randomly select. So, which letter will I go for this time, I wonder? <laughs> this time I'm going for, uh... Oh... <laughs> O. The one between O and Q. Hang about. Tim, will you start, please? Would that be P, then? <laughs> it was P. P. <laughs> it's AP, for goodness sake. It's not AP, it's P. <laughs> it's a bird's eye vegetable rather than a letter of the alphabet. Does that give you any clue? P. Okay, Barry, will you continue, please? Pusillanimous. Parasol. Pod. Pot. Petunia. Parabula. What? I don't know. It's made up. <laughs> it's a vegetable. <laughs> You've never had a stuffed parabula. You have to leave. Perumula. You have them as a side dish. <laughs> and to go with that, I'll have a poppadom. Palindrome. Not too much sauce. 
<laughs> Panamanian, none at all. <laughs> Titter. <laughs> Distinctly. Yeah. I think he was still laughing at Barry. <laughs> I think you're right. Okay, you're disqualified. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> I carry on, Graham. Platoon. Parsnip. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> right, between you and uh, Willie, Graham. Priest. Prod nose. Plywood. Patter. Pate. Pater. Porter. Puta. Peter. Potter. Picked. Well, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to play a round now called Mood Music. <laughs> in which the teams will improvise a scene to fit a random selection of background music. Background music is often employed by directors to alter the mood in films and plays. I understand one director even tried several different tunes by Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. Forgot the same mood every time. <laughs> Deep depression. <laughs> in this round I shall provide each team with a situation which I'd like them to start to enact. However, at a certain unscheduled point, a selection of mood music will be played in and the teams should attempt to adapt their scenarios to suit the music provided. When I've had enough of your scenarios, teams, you'll hear me do this. Was that Wuthering? <laughs> Tim and Willie, you're to start. I'd like you to assume the roles of a bank cashier and a customer who's just come into the bank. A bit Good morning. I am a customer who's just come into the bank. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Um, I'd like you to read this note, which I'm pushing under your grill. <laughs> Would... Would you like to come to the football match with me on Saturday? <laughs> Love, Des. Sorry, sorry, wrong note. Um... <laughs> Read this one. This is a hold-up. <laughs> Would you like me to transfer all the bank's money to the Cayman Islands? <laughs> you realise, sir, if I might call you, sir, at the moment you are being recorded on our video machine. I wonder if I could borrow your makeup. Tell a lie. Look, these are my home movies. <laughs> look, look, there I am dancing on the M1 with not a car to be seen. <laughs> oh, there you are again in Munich. Who's that? Who's that funny little man you're dancing with with the little moustache? Hitler. Ah. Oh. oh dear. It's over. I was enjoying that. Well, it needn't end here. Are you still on for the football or something? <laughs> oh, oh, sweet. Oh, charming. <laughs> okay, Barry and Graham, I'd like you now to take the roles of a vet and a man who's brought his dog into the surgery. <laughs> okay, off you go. Um, oh, morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Brown. Well, how's your old fella today? <laughs> Well, I haven't come about that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's me, it's me dog. <laughs> oh, I see, right. Yeah, that is a surprise. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, you, you lift him onto the table. All oh, right, Joe, yeah, I'll just... Uh, oh, he's a bulky lad. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, he's grown. Son, this is impossible. <laughs> I can, I can, oh, I can't do it. I'm going to be back out here. Back into it, man. Of course, you can do it. Oh, well, okay. I'll give you a hand. I'll give you a hand. Oh, oh. oh. oh there we are. Oh, bless it. Now then, let's have a look. Let's Should we be lying on this table together? <laughs> uh, 
As long as the dog isn't watching, I think there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> leave the dog where he is. And, uh, now, let's have a look. What's this? Good Lord. Has, has, has he always had that? <laughs> yes, both of them. No. <laughs> But he, he is in a, he's in a bit of a state. I, I can see he's in a he's bit, of a, a bit of a state. I can see. Is he? Uh, has he been sniffing around dustbins at all? <laughs> well, all, all, all dogs do that, Doctor. But I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. He's uh, he's been doing a lot lately. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. Yes, yes I, I can see that. Yes. There's always a problem with German shepherds. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, I'll tell you what, let's, let's have a closer look at him. Let's see if we can find out. Ah, oh, now I see what's wrong. <laughs> he's, um, he's got a bee stuck in his ear. <laughs> Carry on, he can't hear you. Hang on a second. There we are, that's got it out. Oh. There we are, that's better. Oh, it didn't now frighten him, though. Oh, yes, so it did. So I see. Yes, uh, get him down, then. Oh, All right. right. Uh, uh, yes, be careful. The floor's a bit slippy now. <laughs> like, oh, 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 dear. Yes. Thank you He's so much. Oh, oh, thank you so much, Dr. Torville. Yes. Oh, it's really great. I'll see you next week. Uh, same time next week. Oh. Um. Okay, the next round's called Unhelpful Advice, which this week takes as its subject the hallowed state of matrimony. Glancing through Hello magazine the other day, I was interested to observe that as well as society weddings, it's possible nowadays to organise society stag nights. They cost over five grand a throw, but you do get a genuine Highland stag thrown in. <laughs> And for an extra 350 quid, Prince William will turn up at the end of the evening to shoot it for him. Okay, team. In this round, I'd like you please to provide some unhelpful advice for married couples. <laughs> Beware of Greeks bearing gifts, Your Majesty. <laughs> it's not enough to say, I'm going down the pub. You've got to say, I'm going down the pub, darling. Here's the Hoover. <laughs> Barry? Stay together through the years, persevere with it, because sex at 60 can be great. But you do need someone else to drive. <laughs> As I've learned, and I've answered some of the many letters that we get on the program. Um, reply here, dear confused. <laughs> dear confused, yes, that is where babies come from. Thank you for the photographs. <laughs> <laughs> if he says he'd like you to moan during lovemaking, tell him the kitchen shelves need fixing. <laughs> Dear Worried, you should... <laughs> Didn't recognise my writing, did you? <laughs> you should tell your husband about your lodger's suggestion. You never know, your husband may feel the same about him. <laughs> I say, let's hurry on to the next round. <laughs> Our next game is a musical version of Just a Minute, the popular radio show. It's chaired, of course, that by the irrepressible Nicholas Parsons whose voice, I'm told, comes to listeners like water to a drowning man. <laughs> our, version of, our version of the game is called Just a Minim, and the object teams is to sing a song of my choosing without hesitation, repetition, Edward Woodward, or deviation. <laughs> One unfortunate repetition which occurs all too often is that Colin Sell is back at the piano again. <laughs> Actually, Colin was telling us that he recently started working on backing material with his new singer. So if anyone needs some curtains run up... <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Okay, the song is Dance to Your Daddy, Graham. Will you start, please? Right. Dance to your daddy, my little laddie. Dance to your daddy. What? <laughs> I think he's forgotten the rules. <laughs> I just want to get out of it. <laughs> then I withdraw my complaint. <laughs> Carry on. My small sheep. <laughs> you still have a fishy? What? You haven't said lamb yet, so you can't sort of go off the... I might later. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to explain. That who's, about who's five, that minutes, <laughs> five minutes before we started this show, they told me that the buzzer doesn't work. And it's true, the lights don't come on. I just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> Okay, Barry, do something. <laughs> what are we, Colin? I'm a little dizzy. Oh. <laughs> you shall have a fishy on a little dishy. One ought to possess a thin creature. When the boat comes in, twirl the brown paterfamilias. Our minute tot <laughs> Whirl around, papa Oh, tiny potential mutton <laughs> I've run out of lyric now, there isn't one It says here, if this doesn't go on for too long <laughs> They might try timey kangaroo dance ball That's what we're going to do Start it off, Tim <laughs> Timey kangaroo down sport, bind my armadillo up. I crease my trousers, then plain, let my mother come home. I'll skip <laughs> keep me cockatoo cool. Help. Somebody, somebody buzzed, who was it? What? Let my mother come home. <laughs> got no relevance to the sense or plot of the song. That I night. accept, I accept. Deviation. Deviation. You're quite right. You're quite right. Carry on, Tim. <laughs> Keep me cockatoo cool, curl. Would you make sure that my lumbago is all right? Please don't put me on the stage. <laughs> Somebody about... Nurse! He was going to say Mrs. Worthington then. <laughs> Deviation. Quite right. Carry on, Tim. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm at a disadvantage here because I can't just hear who buzzes or who sings or whatever. <laughs> just keep Such a me din. Warm back. Warm. Oh, behind I me. Never know. Look after my other animal sport. Take me to the doctor's nurse. I'm out of bed again, mother. <laughs> Worse. Complete breakdown. Complete. It's very, it's very sad. Terminated. I think it's very sad. This. I, I can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> Bloody piano. <laughs> nearly time to draw a veil over the proceedings, but it's just uh, long enough, I think, for the teams to announce the late arrivals at the Undertaker's Ball. So while Samantha checks our panel for any signs of life in the old chaps, <laughs> I'd like you please, teams, to suggest the names of the late arrivals at the Undertaker's Ball. Graham, will you start, please? As always, first to arrive, <laughs> premature Beryl. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Beloved and their daughter, Dilly Beloved. <laughs> Good grief! <laughs> Please, will you welcome a most unlikely sight? Mike Atherton with the ashes. <laughs> Unroll the black carpet. <laughs> Wave your plumage. For Mr. and Mrs. Mortis and their dyslectic son, Roger. <laughs> All the way from Italy, 
<laughs> Signore, signora, drop it a box. <laughs> and the daughter, Donna, drop it a box. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Here's Neil, the putrefacting son of Mr. and Mrs. Real Pyre. Phew, Neil, real pyre. <laughs> And will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Mason and their huge son, Monumental Mason. <laughs> Raise those lovely black top hats. <laughs> Here come Mr. and Mrs. Reaper and their son, Graham Reaper. <laughs> and in fact, he's brought his whore, Topsy. <laughs> will you please welcome from Sweden oh. the Wrights and their son, Lars. <laughs> and this time from the Welsh part of Sweden <laughs> Little little Diddy Die and his son Sven Diddy Die. <laughs> and, and also from Wales, Mr and Mrs. Jones and their cheerful son Happy Taff. <laughs> Jollity, oh gaiety. <laughs> At a funeral, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here come uh, Mr. and Mrs. Barming Fluid and their daughter Emma. <laughs> and the aristocrats, the aristocrats are arriving now. Lord Reith, <laughs> accompanied by Earl Fire and Dame Nation. <laughs> It's cabaret time at the Undertaker's oh, no, Ball. Oh, good heavens. Please bow your heads. <laughs> the Chinese stripper, clad only in bra and sandals, Glee Ming, known to us all as Glee Ming Bra Sandals. I wish I would... <laughs> oh. And so... Well worth the wait. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Dictory? They've come in separate cars. That's his and hers. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Dictory and their daughter, Val E. Dictory. Uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Formaldehyde. <laughs> Mr. Well, and we... Mrs. Mist and their mournful son, sadly. <laughs> And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the eternal flame of time licks hungrily around the Eurotunnel freight wagon of destiny... <laughs> ...and the three-bar electric fire of fate topples into the bubble bath of human dreams... <laughs> ...I notice it's the end of the show, so from Samantha, myself, the teams and the good people of Cambridge, goodbye. Taylor, Barry Cryer, Graham Garden and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>
Another, another distinguished name is that of Sir Isaac Newton, who was Professor of Gravitational Physics at Trinity, where he also taught a little Greek. <laughs> who later went on to open Cambridge's first moussaka bar. <laughs> now, to introduce the teams, and speaking as someone who enjoys their brand of humour, I always recommend them. <laughs> speaking of myself, I never do. <laughs> they are on my right, Willie Rushton and Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> on my left, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and a warm... Warm welcome, please, for our ever-faithful scorer, the lovely Samantha. <laughs> now, our first round is called Channel 4 Children's Hour. In this round, teams, I'd like you, please, to suggest some titles of racy children's programmes suitable for a well-known minority channel faced with privatisation. <laughs> Basically, teams, in thinking up these titles, it'll help to have in mind an image of childish innocence tinged with sinister corruption. <laughs> so, think Andy Peters. <laughs> Barry, will you start? Barry, will you start, please? Chitty, chitty, gangbang. <laughs> 101 Reservoir Dalmatians. <laughs> Directed by Quentin Dandy and Bino. <laughs> Louisa May Alcott's Big Women. <laughs> Winnie the... Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> Electric Blue Peter. <laughs> Snow White and the Nine and a Half Dwarves. <laughs> Bill and Ben behaving badly. <laughs> and God created Noddy. <laughs> Muffin the Mule. <laughs> Babe, the breakfast. <laughs> Lord, Lord Baden... <laughs> Lord Baden Powell's famous book, Snorting for Boys. <laughs> Postman Pat always rings twice. <laughs> Jack and Orgy. <laughs> Last Tango in Trumpton. <laughs> Swallows and Amorous Nuns. <laughs> okay. Lust William. <laughs> Ragtag and Bobbit. <laughs> Okay, it's around now to test the team's musical skills, known in the trade as a quickie. <laughs> it's, it's the round called Pick Up Song. We're going to hear some well-known records to which the teams will sing along. Luckily, DJ Samantha has an impressive set of 45s, which she'll kindly get. <laughs> which she'll kindly get out and spin for our delight. She's poised at the disco turntable, ready to reduce the intoned modulation of the sound frequency to nil, a process known to radiophonic engineers as twisting the knob. <laughs> as the volume fades away, the teams will continue to sing, the object being to stay in time with the record. If, when the music reappears, they're within a Nats pizzicato of the original, <laughs> I'll be awarding points, and points mean prizes. What do points mean? Prizes! I wasn't asking you. <laughs> This week's prize comes from the Duchess of York's Essential Hair Care Range. It's a year's supply of wash and go skiing. <laughs> Willie. Willie, you're to start. I'd like you to accompany Frankie Lane singing Rawhide. Rolling, 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 rolling. It's quite easy so far. Rolling, 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 rolling. 
rolling, rolling, rolling. Ah! Oh, that's quite fun. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Though the streams are swollen, keep them dogies rolling, rawhide. Through rain and wind and weather, hell bent for leather, wishing my girl was by my side. All the things I'm missing, good victuals, loving, kissing, awaiting at the end of my ride. Move them on, head them up, head them up, move them on, move them on, head them up, rawhide, crack. Let them out, ride them in, ride them in, let them out, cut them out, ride them in, rawhide. <laughs> well, if you have the heart to go on, Graham, it's your turn. <laughs> Would you please accompany Lee Dorsey singing Working in a Coal Mine? Working in a coal mine, going down, down, down. Working in a coal mine, oops, about a slip. Working in a coal mine, going down, down, down. Working in a coal mine, whoops, about a slip down. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm already up and gone. Lord, I'm so tired. How long can this go on? I'm working in a coal mine, going down, down, down. Working in the coal mine, oops, about a slip. Working in the coal mine, going down, down. Working in the coal mine, oops, about a slip down. Cause I make a little money, hauling coal by the time. But one Saturday rolls around, I'm too tired for having fun. Working in the gold mine, going down, down, down. Working in the gold mine, oops, about to sleep. Working in the gold mine, going down, down, down. Working in the gold mine, oops, about to sleep. I think this is a fix. <laughs> it's up to you now, Barry. I'd like you please to accompany Elvis Presley singing All Shook Up. <laughs> Well, I'm blessing my soul on what's wrong with me. I'm itching like a man on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm mad and wild as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my hand is shaking and my knees are weak. I can't seem to stand up on my own two feet. Who do you think when you have such luck? I'm in love. Well. <laughs> I'm all shook up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, please don't ask me what's on my mind. You all I'm thought he was a little dead. mixed on my mind. <laughs> when I get a girl that I love the best, my heart beats so oh, it scares me to death. <laughs> Finally, Tim. Tim, would you please accompany those lovely Spice Girls si singing their delightful number, Wannabe. If you want my future, forget my past. If you want to get with me, Better make it fast. Now don't go wasting my precious time. Get your act to get the week could be just fine. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I wanna, 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 I wanna really, really, really want really, to see you. like, oh. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. Make it last forever. God's sake, music coming. Friendship never ends. If you want to be my lover, you have got it. <laughs> okay, teams, our next round is called Word for Word. In, in it, I'd like you please to take it in turns to exchange a stream of random words without the slightest hint of sense or logic. <laughs> Much the same way as Barry does after a long lunch. 
The opposing team should challenge if they uh, notice a connection. And uh, if I uphold the challenge, which I'm unlikely to, because after a whole week to get it mended, they still haven't fixed this buzzer. <laughs> But if I uphold the challenge, then the challengers should take over. OK, right. Barry and Graham, will you start, please? Bulwark. First. Chalice. Pod. Fur. Coat. <laughs> Mechanic. Mechanics wear coats. <laughs> and they put coats of stuff on things when they're mechanising them. Yeah, that's pretty clever. So that's a that's double challenge, really. Yeah. yeah. All right, carry on then, uh, Willie. Goat. Harmonica. <laughs> Winner of Opportunity Knox in 1964. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, Barry, but what did you do with the goat? <laughs> Carry on, Graham. Oh. Oh, go on. You'd started. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh is the same word as oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy that. <laughs> yeah. And then Carry on, Tim. Internet. Frog. Coronet. Carrot. Joystick. <laughs> Graham. Just, just as careful, you know. <laughs> go on, Tim. Punt. Exit. Glass. Crack. <laughs> Glass bottom punt. Yes. Yep. Fair enough. <laughs> Who wants to go on? I think Colin's quite keen. <laughs> I'd hurry it along now, Willie, quick. Prune. Chair. Oh. Spatula. Saliva. Ch challenge from whoever. No, not us. <laughs> OK. <laughs> As we're about halfway through the show, the theatre management have asked me to pass on this message to our audience. Anyone wishing to avoid the crowds when leaving, please try to wait till the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you. Right, it's time now to play the game called Mornington Crescent. But before we do, I noticed from the bulge in our post bag this week that another card has flooded in from a Mrs. Trellis of North Wales with comments on her favourite show. Dear Mr. Duggleby, she writes. <laughs> great, 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 great. Yes, great, 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 great. Does that Delia Smith do nothing else all day? <laughs> Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis. Right, back to the game teams, and since we're in Cambridge, we'll play according to Trumpington's variation. <laughs> That's a refined and highly cerebral version, generally preferred by intellectuals. <laughs> but we're going to play it anyway. It tends, <laughs> it tends to be rather a defensive game teams, in which positional play is of the essence, so take care not to become blocked boxed or cornered. I'll start you off, teams, with Albright's opening, OK? Totteridge and Whetstone. <laughs> Tim, will you continue, oh. please? Well, I think there's only one way to go from there. Uh, but I'm not going that way. <laughs> um, it's usually Regent Street, but I'll try Lower Regent Street. Oh, careful. King Street. Yeah. Which one? Cambridge one. <laughs> Don't be silly. That's just foolish. Oh, yes. Not the Hammersmith London one. Cambridge. King Street in Cambridge. Yeah. Yeah, go on. That's right. <laughs> go on, Willie. Oval Road. <laughs> Thank you. Swiss. You get box. She knows Albright's opening. <laughs> Hendon. Oh, go on, go on. Hendon Central. Central? Central, yeah. yeah. You're out. 
Craven Cottage. Bond Street. Thank you. <laughs> Fulham uh, Palace Road. Yeah, very good. Thank you. You I could have whooped. I think you're boxed. <laughs> Thank you. I think you're boxed. I think you're boxed, Willie. No. He's well, blocked. He's blocked. So. He's not boxed. Blocked, but not boxed. I'm far from cornered. But, um, well, we could call in the diagonals here and do Bishop's Gate. That's good. <laughs> oh, we laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Mitre Court. Oh. Yeah, ha. Whack, that was. Fitzwilliam Street. Yeah. <laughs> Whack, back. Ah. <laughs> well, may you pause. You could... The embankment. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. See the smiles vanish from their faces. It's like, whoosh, the colour has washed from their yeah. cheeks. <laughs> You'd swear they were in black and white now, wouldn't you? Look at them. <laughs> the Hague. <laughs> Very good, very good. <laughs> Folkestone Road. Mornington Crescent. Yeah. Ah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. It's time now for a round of limericks. Actually, it's quite interesting where the name limerick comes from. It's a, corrupt, it's a corruption of the old French word for America. L'Amérique. <laughs> no, it's true. It's, it's not a bluff, it's true. French migrants sailing to the New World will be blown off course to Southern Ireland, where they landed and mistakenly called it L'Amérique. <laughs> There's still a large community of Limerick French to this day, as visitors to their annual festival of sheep burning and lorry wrecking will testify. <laughs> right, teams, I shall furnish you with a potential packed opening, which I'd like you to complete in turn, taking one line each. Graham, you're going to start. A porter from Gonville and Keys. A porter from Gonville and Keys grew potatoes on both of his knees. <laughs> on the end of his nose grew a rare kind of rose. <laughs> but you'll never guess where he grew these. <laughs> Tim, here's yours. While out with a couple of blues. I didn't know which one to choose. The one with the squint? Or the one with the splint? <laughs> I have both. I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> Barry, here's yours. While out on the cam in a punt. Saw Reverend Spooner in front. <laughs> he said, What a day gay. <laughs> <laughs> and anchors away. <laughs> And make way for my podding sunt. <laughs> and finally, here's yours, Willie. Oh, if you're studying natural science... If you're studying natural science, I suggest that you wear this appliance. <laughs> You strap it on thus. <laughs> then just hop on a bus. <laughs> and you'll find you get masses of clients. <laughs> right, now, our next game is called Singer and the Song. And in it, I'd like each team member to imagine he's a famous and well-loved personality. <laughs> And then adapt a song of my choosing to the style of that personality. You'll be accompanied by Colin Sell, 
who'll be trying to adapt his style to that of a pianist. <laughs> Actually, you might be surprised to hear that Collins' releases invariably go straight in at the number one spot. <laughs> Usually when he's aiming for the treble 20. <laughs> Barry, we'll start with you. Would you please sing zippity doo da to the style of Quentin Crisp? Would you please sing the song called Happiness, having assumed the persona of Joe Grundy from The Arches? <laughs> Simon Pemberton. <laughs> Happiness. Happiness. I just give for that possess, Eddie. I thank the Lord I've been blessed with my share of happiness. <laughs> Finally, a duet for you, Tim and Willie. I'd like you, please, to once more assume the identities of the Queen and Princess Margaret. <laughs> Singing Sisters. soon have to say farewell, but th there's just time, I think, to fit in a round of Biscuit Makers Film Club. <laughs> so teams, while Samantha nips out to enjoy a mouthful of Jacobs. <laughs> I'd like you please to sit... I'd like you please... <laughs> I'd like you please to suggest some titles of films likely to prove mm. popular with an audience of Biscuit Makers. Okay, Tim, start up. Hobnobs and breadsticks. <laughs> McVitty, Vitty, Bang, Bang. <laughs> the Singing Digestive. <laughs> and there's the First Wives Club. <laughs> there's uh, Bath Oliver Twist and the Artful Jammy Dodger. <laughs> La Dolce Rivita. <laughs> Glenn Garibaldi, Glenn Ross. 
Not Newton. to mention Gandhi Baldy. <laughs> directed by Bicky Attenborough. <laughs> Cream Krakatoa, east of Jaffa. <laughs> and of course, bring me the crisp bread of Alfredo. <laughs> Mutant ginger nut turtles. <laughs> the penguin has landed. <laughs> A rivita runs through it. <laughs> the Flash bourbon. <laughs> the crumbs of Navarone. Lord of the Squashed Flies. <laughs> Starring Jack Lemon Puffs. <laughs> Page Charlie your wagon the, uh, wheel. <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobnob. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as the short-sighted rhino of time attempts to mount the VW Beetle of Eternity. <laughs> And the rubber glove of hope gets lost in the Aberdeen Angus of destiny. <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show, and indeed the series. So from Samantha, the teams, myself, and the good people of Cambridge, goodbye. Kimberly Taylor, Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton. Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson and the producer was John Naismith. <laughs>